Thank you very much for your support, and thank you to my patrons for making this video possible. Enjoy the video, guys. What a maneuver! How's it going, everybody? I am late to the party, but we are going to be going over all of the jet burn reveals so far. I got everything up on Ultra here, and as of this recording, uh, Jiro is the most recent reveal, so we're going to be doing that later. Check out that video if this is on YouTube. Uh, check that out in a later upload. But for right now, we're going to start with Best Genus. Best Genus is a 7 hand size, 19 health character with the all death and good symbols. And he's got two responses. He's a 719 with double responses. He also has the pro hero keyword. There's actually a lot going on with the uh, the new character cards here. I think the I think the character keywords are probably the coolest thing to come out of Jetburn so far. Um, I think it adds a lot of little detail to how you can balance certain abilities because, you know, we saw like Shoto, Todoroki, and Endeavor form, and everyone was like, well, couldn't Dobby still use it because of the family name and like stuff like that, but, you know, this is like an easier way to do that, right? You could just put like their last name or their family name or something like that together. So that is the coolest thing. I'm way, I'm spending too much time on that. We need to talk about this character. Um, so double responses. First one is once per turn, discard a card. After an attack is blocked, add one attack from your rival's discard pile to their card pool. So pretty interesting stuff. A card from hand to stuff into the card pool is usually a really good rate. Um, that is typically, especially if you're not on defense, it is almost always something you can afford to do, right? Uh, it's like a mini ins mouth ability, but it's a block punishment, meaning you can sort of, or it's not even really punishment if you do it, right? So it, it you can control it on defense. It's way more open-ended as far as when the clog can happen. But the fact that it has to be an attack means that it's probably not gonna ruin your average combo deck string. And there's a decent amount of characters as you'll see in the other reveals later that care about just having their attacks in the card pool and like their keyword in the card pool. So a little tame, it's a little tame, but overall it should do its job of slowing down big strings of attacks and adding that difficulty. I like the fact that it rewards you for attacking or for blocking early. You know, if you block the first attack, a lot of people, they you know, you wanna use sticky balls on the first attack if you can. You want to cheerful uppercut so that way the difficulty is on every single attack afterwards and that can kind of bait you into making a bad block decision but for best genus because it's on the character card it's gonna be part of whatever block you're already doing so that's pretty cool um and then the second response is after the second attack this turn is played it gets plus two speed and damage or minus two speed and damage if there's a ranged attack in your card pool, draw a card. So pretty simple here. It's basically once per turn as well. Um, it works, you know, it goes with the, the same idea of the rejuvenating smash sort of lineup. It's twice shaped, but not quite twice-esque. Uh, twice gets to do a lot more work to, to get more stats on, on different attacks. But this is only the second attack this turn. But it is a lot of stats. It's a lot of stats for a seven-hander. So it's interesting to me that he seems to try to prevent you from doing long strings of attacks. And he's not really geared towards doing long strings of attacks. Um, so I'm interested to see if plus two plus two to a single move is enough to make like a really powerful poke game happen. But the fact that the fact that you you have to do it on the second attack means you're already going to invest a little bit, right? Um, if it's a combo that you're trying to do, you'll become weaker to things like face shield. You'll become weaker to things like breakers. Um, because it's only your second attack played this turn, you'll be really weak to stuff like Toru 2. And for a lot of you guys who have followed the channel for a while, you know, if you're weak to Toru 2, I, <laughs> I have some strong opinions. So Toru 2 is looking better and better by the day as far as characters that she really hurts, right? Because you you it, it might not be the right play every time, don't get me wrong, but if you want to, every single time, 
Best genus plays the second attack of this turn. You wait for them to do their response, right? And they'll want to just because it's the only time they'll get to draw a card. If they don't do the response, like you're still winning, right? Like they're just not forcing your response out. So it's stuff like that. Um, cheerleader. Cheerleader doesn't really hurt this too bad as much as it hurts most of the play from somewhere else or it has to be the second attack or what I'll just call like pigeonhole attacks. Um, this gets around cheerleader pretty well because it is a response. So you don't have like the twice issue of getting your attack flashed is a big deal. Um, still weak to attack wipes just because that's where all your stats are. But uh, someone pointed out that he does have a USJ symbol. So that's pretty interesting. USJ, the terrain that says your second attack each turn or both players second attack each turn gets plus two, plus two. So he can like kind of negate that on their side of the board. If it's still ready during the rival's turn, or he can like really capitalize on that and make like a really big poke. So pretty cool stuff. And then the last sentence, if there's a ranged attack in your card pool, is kind of telling you, like, all right, bud, we're gonna be we're gonna be heavy on range. Just how it's gonna be. You're gonna want that ranged attack to get that card draw, to afford the response, to discard the card, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But as long as people are attacking and you do have ranged attacks available. To put into the card pool you should be able to keep up the card flow and use all your abilities so all in all a pretty neat little idea i think it's a little all over the place i don't think it's super cohesive um for people who are big best genus fans let me know down in the comments below is this like what you thought best genus's quirk was going to be like um because i get that he's restrictive so he clogs your card pool he can like pull on your clothes and like stop you from moving and, and immobilize you and stuff so i get like the top response the second one is kind of weird to me i don't know but let me know if you're a best genus stan and you you're like i've been waiting for this character i'm going to play it no matter what let me know what you thought in the comments below about what his quirk was going to look like in the game but the first attack the uncommon attack here is a fiber capture it's a five difficulty ex2 range it's blocked by a non-attack card. Your next attack gets stunned too, which is pretty strong, I guess. Um, blocked by a non-attack card punishment is pretty interesting stuff. Uh, it's very much telling us that decks that want to sculpt on our turn deserve to be punished. And I think it's kind of weird, but at the same time, I mean, I don't want to block with my attacks. So this is like design that has been informed by... <laughs> The way people play the game. And I think that's interesting. I don't think it's like good or bad. I don't really have an opinion on whether or not it's good or bad. But I do think that it is specifically a result of trying to trying to push the game towards how do I put it? Not necessarily towards a conclusion, right? But it is it is it is aware of the fact that the optimal way to play most of the time is to be blocking with all your non-attacks first and then blocking with attacks when you have to. So I think it's kind of interesting. It's informed by players. Uh, and then enhance discard one momentum, add one rival momentum to their card pool face up. So we're not doing a lot of face downs in the card pool. I wonder if that's gonna matter in the kit later. Um, I think it'd be cool if he like points at specific types of cards in the card pool. Like if you have an asset, do this. If you have an action, do that. Um, I've used that as like a fan design before, and I think that stuff's really cool. It's something they've never really done before. They've looked at numbers, but I don't think they've really looked at like, do you have each different card type and do different stuff based on that? So I think it would have been really cool if he was like the alternate win condition character. And it was like, if your rival has four different card types in their card pool, you win, you know, and he got bonuses for different stuff. And obviously the deck wouldn't even work like the alternate win con wouldn't even work if your opponent's not playing assets or actions or whatever. But I, I think it could be cool. You know, or maybe like look for different keywords. You know, look for like a certain number of keywords. You know, most decks have some smattering of keywords, just something like that. But um, other than that, this is a pretty decent stat stick. It's got EX. I think this is like your draft poke. You know, this is the kind of thing you'll play. Uh, to open up your turn and if your opponent blocks with the wrong card your second attack is going to be plus two plus two and they've stuffed a card in the card pool and now it's stunned two and it's 
effectively like 10 speed and it's for eight damage and you're never blocking it and then they pass and build two and they're holding two cards right so it's it's pretty fair i think it's pretty fair but it can allow you to get some leeway in it can it can open the gates uh just strictly around like this one two poke style of play next up we're gonna do fiber web combo this is the ultra rare as you can tell by the bleeding text box and the extra art on the card and it's a uh, it's ranged combo ranged range so this is basically a six difficulty if you want to do the combo enhance and the combo enhance is that it gets throw a four low for three throw not super impressive but we can enhance to discard one card from our rival's card pool and it gets plus x damage and X equals the card's difficulty. So there we go. We're, we're pointing at numbers, right? We're looking for numbers. We're doing things based on numbers. Um, and now we have that synergy, of course, with we want things to be face up because we want them to have numbers. So that makes a lot more sense why stuff goes face up. And the fact that it goes based off of difficulty makes sense on why, you know, we're trying to add attacks to the card pool. And... This one's kind of interesting. I don't think it's very good unless you have the combo, right? Like if a, if you had it as a four low for three, you discard, you know, a five diff. So it's four low for eight, that's pretty good. But you did get rid of minus one speed, you know, it could have been a five low. So it's, it, it not too many decks, I'll say this, not too many decks have been very good at the Tabe idea of discarding cards from the rival's card pool. Um, but at least this one does have a reason to get there. And if you do the combo, the speed won't matter anymore. So, and he's not, it's not like he's on creepy realization symbols, right? So the synergy for stuffing the card pool isn't really there. It seems like he's just stuffing the card pool mostly for an excuse at least so far to look for a specific number so it's an interesting way to go about it i think that this card has too many interaction points for people to really consider it but if you're not prepared for it it can absolutely dunk you also plus one mid block on both these attacks so something to uh to keep track of is when you're in like a draft or a sealed environment your block mods uh are very very important Stylish Strike, three high for four, four difficulty, plus two low. So he's got some good block mods. He's got some, some pretty nice block mods. Uh, if it's not blocked, draw two cards. And then Pro Hero Enhance, there's that keyword again, right? The keyword on the character. Pro Hero Enhance, the damage of this attack cannot be reduced below printed. Interesting. I, I don't know how important that really is, but it basically forces you to actually block it you know because you could go okay well you can draw two but i take no damage but i think you're just trying to block this three high for four i don't know it's a common it's whatever and then stylish threads this is our rare attack and it is powerful three so right off the bat we're uh <laughs> getting a little more potent so four mid for five good stats for a mid attack powerful three and then this attack cannot be blocked by copies of cards in your rival's card pool. This one is cool. Deadlock, enhance, add two cards from your rival's discard pile to their card pool. This one I like. This one is very cool. This one makes me want to do like an all mids kind of a thing. So you're more likely to have mid blocks in your card pool. And then, you know, other iterations of mids can't block this attack. It's obviously got a big payoff. It's meant to be a win condition. And... I don't know how likely you are to generate momentum with ranged attacks on these symbols, but I'm here for this. This is like a kooky out of left field. You know, there's not many ways to play around it. Not too many, there's not too many ways to clear your own card pool unless you're like on the void symbol. Um, or I guess, you know, Fruits of Our Labor has three symbols, but who's playing that card like outside of our racer heads right now? Like be honest with yourself. Who's playing it at more than a one of copy? Like maybe at the sideboard, I don't know. But so I like this card a lot. I think if you're gonna try and play best genus in like a specifically unique way, I think you play around this card. I think you build around this win condition to really epitomize his his differences, you know, to 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 really hone in on what makes his kit unique. 
Um, other than that, we got the foundations here. We got number three pro hero. Not really something to brag about usually. But before your end phase, add one range card from your card pull to your hand. Very cool little recursion. That way you don't, uh, or that way you can, you know, get the, the card draw on your rival's turn more often. And if you're going to be blocking with attacks, we talked about how much you don't like that already. Um, it's better to get double use out of it, right? It's better to be able to poke with him because he's got a good poke game. And then be able to add it back to our hand block with it on the rival's turn, stuff their card pool, get our draw going. Um, I don't know how super impactful it is. It might end up getting cut, but at at least at face value, it makes a ton of sense to me. Um, and it's really nice for decks that want to keep pressure up, for decks that like have to attack. So like I could see five hand size loving this card. If you're like a tiger deck that's playing ranged attacks, you know, uh, what is it, the, the half hot ignition, I think is it, right? Something where you're like, okay, I'm going to flip this and basically get a card draw out of it next turn. I think that's pretty solid. Pro hero response. Tenacious, meaning you can do it while committed. Flip after you discard one or more cards due to a rival effect. Draw a card. A little bit of discard protection. It's just kind of tacked on, but playable while committed, so that's neat. Always cool. Too difficulty. Uh, cannot leave the card pull during the combat phase, so suck it, Tabi, I guess. Uh, what other character maybe Innsmouth? What other character like discarding something from the card pool? I don't know. Uh I guess forcing surrender if you're trying to combo off and do fancy maneuvers. It has ranged in taunt, so it's got a couple different keywords to combo off of. You know, you got like some some combo foundation stuff. So I guess it has forcing surrender protection for that kind of a thing. Um, but you can enhance, add to the card pool, build the top two cards of your deck. So the real reason the static is there is to prevent you from abusing it. <laughs> it's not to protect your combo. It's to prevent you from discarding it after you build to. Um, and then response destroy after an attack is played. Its damage cannot be modified. That's pretty strong. I think that's solid. I think it's a different way. This Again, this feels like... It feels like a five-hander card. Like, am I tripping? As a seven-hander, I don't care what you fucking do to the damage of an attack. I'm blocking it, right? I mean, it protects your own attack, too, but still. Um, I guess it plays both sides. I guess maybe there's going to be, like, uh, more damage reduction strategies coming out because they seem to have a healthy amount of protection against damage reduction, but I haven't seen too many decks rely on it as a primary method of defense it's usually like one big reset to prevent you from just you know one 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 punch man excuse me from doing the one punch man combo um but yeah so this is kind of in that vein like it, it saves you from getting killed by one attack most of the time but i guess it also prevents broken psyche from just stopping you from killing them i don't know i think this card should get played more than it will is how i'll put it Fashion Icon 2-5. Enhanced Flip. Change this attack speed to the printed speed of an attack in your rival's card pool. Okay. So we have like a damage can't be modified card. Now we have like a speed reset card. But with extra hoops. Uh, I don't know how much I like this one outside of Best Genius. Because <laughs> uh, he gets to forcibly put like your fastest attack into your card pool if he's trying to play around some shit like this. It's kind of weird. Uh, I think it just needed a second ability just to give it a little more versatility because being conditional and it, it's got like two conditions, right? Like your opponent has to have an attack in the card pool, but then it also has to be one with like a decent enough speed for you to care. Uh, it does automatically prevent your opponent from like playing two attacks and then shooting one attack speed to the moon. So as a defensive reset, it's probably just fine, right? It's probably, like, almost never bad. But I think people are going to struggle to include it just because of the versatility on, like, half of its symbols. And then last but not least, we have Styling Bakugo. I think this is his best foundation. It's a 1-5, enhance commit. Your ranged attack gets plus 1 damage. If it's not blocked, add the top card of your rival's discard pile to their card pool. It's a 1-5 that gives damage and clogs the card pool. So you can get like one damage 
and plus one speed to everything. You know, and for like I said, I think that the the coolest part of the kit is stylish threads. So this is going to be like a big way to force your opponent to add something to the card pool, no matter what. No matter what, you got to stuff something in there, baby. So whether you're blocking or whether it's not blocked, this is kind of like a, what is it? Eat my sticky balls, but for these symbols. But it's not a foundation. Uh, it does have to. I guess it does have to go with ranged attacks. So it's not quite as open-ended. It still has to be a ranged attack because it says if it is not blocked. But still, I'm, I'm here for it. I think that this is probably his best foundation. I think it helps his unique game plan out the most. And I think it's like the most frightening thing in his kit to sit down across the table from, you know? This is the one where I'm like, oh, you built two of these on turn one. Man, I hope you don't just have like the world's fastest poke or I check a three on something, you know, like th this can, styling Bakugo can get out of hand pretty fast. Luckily, uh, the commit instead of like a flip cost, I think is super fair. You know, I think it's it's definitely a card that needed to commit the resource uh, rather than flip it. Um, but yeah, I, I like this one. Uh, so I think from the kit, overall, my impressions are it's a little all over the place. It's not super cohesive, but it does still kind of on these symbols. I feel like it's still is all in one like it's one package that you kind of have to play together so i don't think unless they reveal stuff later as of right now it feels like you're kind of stuck playing like his ranged attacks to mostly do his gimmick you know you'll get to splash in a couple of things some value stuff here or there um like if you don't take the combo attack which i could easily see you not including but if you are doing all this card pool stuffing i feel like you should so i don't know but if you take out the range to, or the the combo range range you can probably jam some punches in here on these symbols and feel good about it um you probably are gonna want to grab a little more card draw than like a seven hander normally does but other than that i think it's i think it's just okay i think it's very very okay i think you get to play these symbols in a way that these symbols haven't played before uh but because of that you're not gonna have like a lot of support to really do your gimmick unless you're playing his cards so i'm not sure how that'll play out for draft or sealed but as far as standard goes i think it's like a five out of ten i'll give him like a c like a middle c grade mostly because he's a seven hander but yeah that's that's how i feel let me know how you guys feel let me know are you playing best gina taking over the format i'm putting him very very middle ground that's just me.